Alright, Shalom. First of all, I'd like to start by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and salutations to the Arkham out there doing this work in sincerity and in truth. Alright, today's lesson is going to be based upon, I'm going to title it, Destruction, Esau's heart is hardened and ripe. Uh, we're going to get into that topic in a minute. So what it is, is, um, you know, Esau's heart is, is hardened, but there's a reason why Esau's heart is hard, hardened, man. All right. Against the children of Israel and the reason why he's so prideful. All right. And the reason why is because the Lord has done it to him. All right. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh. All right. He had put a spirit upon Esau to be, basically to be wicked, but, but ultimately to be, um, to be, to be proud, man. And to and to resist the will of the heavenly Father, so that the heavenly Father could do His thing, which is to um, bring Him down as a nation of people. All right, bring His um, rulership down. All right. So, first scripture I'm gonna get is Jeremiah, the 16th chapter, and um, the 14th verse. There we are. It says, They shall die of grievous deaths. Where am I? They shall die of grievous deaths. They shall not be lamented, neither shall they be buried. But they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth. Salaki, that's the fourth verse. And the um, verse um, 14. Salaki. Jeremiah 16 and 14. It says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Alright, and the land of Egypt, basically, you had the ancient Egypt, and you have modern day Egypt, which is America. Alright, it goes on to say in verse 15, But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, all right, America, and from all the lands whither he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers, which is talking about Israel, because the, um, our people were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, all right, and um, our people basically don't know who they are, but there's going to come a time where we're going to be placed back in the land of Israel, all right. I'll read, um, it says verse 15 again, but, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. So it's nothing for the Lord to restore Israel. The same way we was restored um, going back to Egypt, all right, in the time of Pharaoh. And from all the lands whether he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. All right, so from here, I'd like to go to Exodus 10 and 27th, 27th verse as a reference point. So Exodus 10, and go to um, verse 27. It says, But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. Talking about the Israelites, all right? Pharaoh, the king at the time, um, going back to ancient Egypt, he's the most high hardened his heart. That he wouldn't um, let Israel go, no matter what the Lord done to him with pestilences and plagues. All right, you can read about the ten plagues of Egypt. You just have to Google it. All right, but even still, he didn't want to let the Lord's people go, man. And that shows you how um, powerful that spirit that the Lord can put on a man to be so proud, uh, um, to resist, to resist the will of the Lord. All right. Um. Now, from here, I'd like to go into the word um, hardened in the 27th verse. So we can come to an understanding of what the word hardened means. Now, the word there is chazak. Chazak, which means to strengthen, prevail, harden. To be strong, to become strong, to be courageous, firm, um, to be sore. Uh, I'm going to pick out certain um, 
outline of biblical usage definitions. Let's see here. Let's scroll down. To grow hard in a bad sense, to be severe, to be grievous. All right. Um, and they, those Egyptians, they made us to to serve with rigor, man. All right. We were hundred percent slaves, man. Working day and night. All right. Um, to make strong, um, continue down, to make severe, here we go, to have or take or keep hold of, and that's what he did, he kept hold of our people, um, in bondage, um, to strengthen oneself, to put forth strength, use one's strength to withstand, to hold strongly with, uh, make bold. All right, so that's pretty much it. All right, that's exactly what um, what the ancient Egyptian pharaoh did, man. He became bold, like. He don't care what happens, it's his decision and he ain't letting go. And it's the same thing as this so-called white man right now. He's being made bold, man. All right. He's, um, he's comfort and strengthening himself in these technologies that he has to say, to show, look, I am that guy. All right. All the weapon systems, the weapon technology that he has, the, the various armies across the world that he's placed. All right. Uh, you know, the intercontinental ballistic missiles. His, his technological advancement is how he's strengthening himself and, and magnifying himself as if he can never be brought down in the same way that Pharaoh did. But then Pharaoh was sorely mistaken. Eventually, what happened? We, 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 we were freed, man. All right? Um, so, ultimately, what's going to happen to this so-called white man. Okay, so from here, I'm going to go to Job 20. Let's see, it's Job 20 and uh, 22. It says, in the, in the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Because so, the elites of this society, the so-called white man society in the time that we're living in, all right, they're going to be in straits. Because when they, when they um, make plans to make, uh, fulfill their um, new world order, that's when the Heavenly Father is going to um, start getting busy, man. And, um, pretty much all these last few prophecies, they're going to all be fulfilled, man. And one part of the... Um, the main prophecies is um, the RFID chipping, all right? And the so-called white man is poised to uh, um, radio frequency, put uh, radio frequency identification devices in all the public, all right? Through very different, many different ways, all right? Because what the RFID technology is basically a system where people can be tracked, all right? And various, excuse me, various different things. But ultimately, that that chip is really just to mark a certain um, amount of jakes that really, by having that mark on them, they're saying they belong to um, this so-called white man. They're putting their trust in this devil. All right, because in the ancient world, we, we used our people used to put if we put a all or an earring in, we basically saying as saying we don't want to leave our our master's house. And that's basically what putting an RFID chip in is doing. Basically saying we belong, we're cattle to this so-called white man. All right, instead of our heavenly father. So what's going to happen ultimately? You're going to be destroyed. Verse 22, I'll continue on. It says, in the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Because, yeah, because the Lord, his prophecy that this so-called white man is going to go down. No matter what, how pr how proud he is, he's still gonna have to pay for all the wickedness that he's done to throughout the whole of history, man. Um, 
every hand of the wicked shall come upon him when he is about to fill his belly talking about his new world order Yahweh shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eaten he shall flee from the iron weapon in a kind of uh, nuclear war all right and the bow of steel shall strike him through so america is going to be destroyed it is drawn and cometh out of the body the silo yea the glittering sword come off out of his ghoul terrors are upon him terrors are upon him so that's all I want on that um, I'm gonna jump to Isaiah 14 and 10 This is Isaiah 14 and 10. All they shall speak unto me, unto thee, art thou, art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Yeah, because all these nations are going to see how weak, are, they already are seeing how weak America has become. And they've got basically got all that same weapon technology that the so-called white man America has. All right, NATO and he, all his allies. And pretty much, as, 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 what's going to happen, not pretty much, what's going to happen is Esau's allies are going to turn on him. Alright? Uh, what verse am I in? 10. I'll read it again. All day shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Because the so-called white man used to be in his um, glory days, going back to the 50s and before the 50s, alright? He was on top. But then now, all nations have gained everything that he pretty much has. And they're trying to do their own thing. But Esau's getting up the hump or upset about it. And he's trying to um, bring this World War Three into fruition. So that um, pretty much he can finish his new world order, his, his um, agenda. But like the scripture said before, he ain't going to be able to fulfill that agenda. Yahweh Shai is coming back. To destroy and 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 to redeem his people israel all right you so-called hispanics native americans all right you so-called west indians your true nationality is that you're israelites all right from here i'd like to go to proverbs 21 And one, it says the king's heart. Salakio. Yeah, it says um, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it so whithersoever he will. So ain't nothing for the Lord to um, to control a man and make him do whatever he wants. The same way he used Pharaoh for his purpose, the so-called white man was uh, had a purpose. All right. And he's put the so-called white man's purpose. Was, was to do wickedness in the world and be an example of how not to be. His purpose is to be destroyed. Now, I'm going to give you some examples um, of men that the, Lord's, um, the Lord hardened their hearts. A good example... Um, to reference is Antiochus Epiphanes now first I'm going to read you a bit about him and then you can you know go and do your own research Antiochus Epiphanes uh, 170 to 175 to 164 BC it says was the eighth ruler of the Seleucid Empire he gave himself the surname Epiphanes Epiphanes which means the visible God, all right? So he basically promoted himself as being a deity, that he and Jupiter were identical. He acted as though he really were Jupiter, and the people called him Epimenes, meaning the madman. He was violently bitter against the Jews 
and was determined to exterminate them and their religion. He devastated Jerusalem in 168 BC, defiled the temple, offered a pig on its altar, erected an altar to Jupiter, prohibited temple worship, forbade circumcision on pain of death, sold thousands of Israelite families, Jews, into slavery, destroyed all copies of scripture that could be found and slaughtered everyone discovered in possession of such copies and resorted to every conceivable torture to force Jews to renounce their religion. This led to the Maccabean Revolt, one of the most heroic feats in history. Antioch the Antiochus bust discovery is important. The study of biblical archaeology it reveals an image of the man who was mentioned in the book of Daniel. So anyway, that's a bit about um, Antiochus Epiphanes. Like I said, uh, you can read into you know the Maccabean Revolt, um, Second Maccabees, and so forth. All right, um, but now I'm going to read to you his latter end. Because all the wickedness that he'd done to Israel, he still had to pay for it. Now, what I just read, um, I'll try and add into the, um, you know, not the comments, the um, box below. This is from, what I just read was called Antiochus Epiphanes Bust. It was from BibleHistory.com. I'll try and put it in... Um, the box below now moving on to the Wikipedia when you scroll down to the final years it has um, a paragraph here it says but the all-seeing Lord the Lord God of Israel struck him in an incurable and unseen blow as soon as he ceased speaking he was seized with a pain in his bowels for which there was no relief and with sharp internal tortures and that very justly for he had tortured the bowels of others with many and strange inflictions yet he did not in any way stop his insolence because his heart his heart was hardened right but was even more filled with arrogance breathing fire in his rage against the Jews and giving orders to hasten the journey and so it came about that he fell out of his chariot as it was rushing along and the fall was so hard as to torture every limb of his body man so he at the end of the day Antiochus suffered a very painful death all right and he didn't take heed to um to the deliverance of of Israel from the hand of Pharaoh and neither is the um, the elites of today taking heed to to what happened to Antiochus Epiphanes, all right? And pretty much Antiochus and all them man, they're they're there's something called reincarnation in the scriptures, which is another video. But all those those devils from then are all reincarnated now, and they're doing the same thing. So their latter their latter end is what death destruction. So that being said, I'm going to go from here to reference prophecy and current news. All right. And to do that, I'm going to go into um, current news. Let's just look up randomly and see what you've got here. Um, this is from Russia Today. It says Russia to introduce universal fingerprinting of foreigners. It says... Um, Universal fingerprinting of all foreign citizens who enter the territory of the Russian Federation could become a reasonable measure countering the serious threat to our national security, the infiltration of the so-called foreign terrorists. All right. So that shows you there's tension with um, these um, proxy armies between NATO and America, headed by America and their allies and Russia and their allies. All right. But it's prophecy that the, the, the RFID chip is going to be handed out on a mass scale. Not just to, to foreigners, but to everybody. Citizens, national citizens and everyone. This is just a, a phase of the system slowly being implemented. 
Okay, uh, I'm just going to scroll down here, see if I can uh, catch anything that catches my eyes. But you brothers that, you know, have been in this thing, you know what the deal is, man. This devil, he ain't got much much time left. Alright, he's through. His time is up. The only reason why he ruled is because the Lord put him in that position. Uh, what's that in uh, Daniel's? I believe the the possibly the seventh chapter. And give the king to the basest of men, and Esau is a base man. Um, just give me one second. I know I saw a few earlier on, and yesterday, and they just keep coming hard and heavy. Let's check the U.S. news. A transgender killing, killings hit an all-time high. Well, oh, that's good. America's got nothing but homosexuality, which is another reason why America's going to go down. And once again, not taking heed to what happened in a biblical history with Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, State Department authorizes sale of 10.5 billion missile defense system to Poland. Uh, Poland is poised to buy four Patriot air and missile defense systems from the US worth an estimated 10.5 billion. The NATO allies defense minister says the country has been expanding their military to defend against Russia. You know, we, we could continue reading the news, man, but... This is a daily, you know, a daily thing. It's a daily thing. The same with Iran are getting um, all kind of missile uh, defense systems from Russia, and it goes on and on. Now, for, for lack of time, I'm going to read Ezekiel 38 and the first verse. Because this war is all in prophecy. Um, Ezekiel 38 and 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, which the land of Magog is where Russia is today. All right. It says, The chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord, Power, behold, I am against thee, O Gog. I think uh, Gog is Gawag, uh, Magog is Magawag. I think it means uh, mountainous, mountainous land. The chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army. Talking about the um, old Soviet um, military, man. Going back to the old Soviet Union bringing their allies back together as one um that was their russia's might uh back in the day man a very powerful army but they're all being brought together now for this ultimate world war three that the heavenly father is um is orchestrating um verse four it says and i will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armour, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. And that's what's happening right now over there in the Middle East. Everyone's gathering their weapons and they're um, uh, doing drills, preparing for this World War Three. <laughs> like we was reading in this um, articles we was reading. It says, um, Persia, which is... Um, the old name for Iran, the original name of Iran was Persia, but they changed it. So that's how you know it's talking about Iran. Ethiopia, which right between Iran right now, which had just had, um, I believe it was an earthquake where loads of people died. Um, 
Iran basically something happened between Iran and the Saudi Arabians and there's a lot of news articles you can check out regarding that matter which shows you the ten there's tension between uh, Russia's allies and um, America's allies man all right and them Khazarian um, them fake Jews man them fake the people that stole our land we're gonna be put back in that land according to prophecy and they're gonna be destroyed on that land and purged excuse me but they're they're involved as well um, it says Ethiopia and Libya with them all of them shield and helmet Goma which is the um, so-called Turkish they're not gonna be an ally with America anymore man they're gonna go back to um, being an ally with Russia and we saw that play out not long ago because of the um, you know, there was a, I forgot the term they used, but they're basically between, it was suspected that you the US had something to do with um, the insurgents, um, basically like an army trying to take over um, um, Turkey at the time, which I've done a video on this channel about, you can check it out. All right. Um, but basically they're not going to be an ally with um, a part of NATO anymore. Which is a part of prophecy. All their bands, the house of Togomar of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee, be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. So uh, Russia, Russia is basically being a guard unto Syria and all these different countries, uh, giving them defence and so forth from from America and NATO. And, and, and basically uh, defending them. And that's how you know Gog is um, Russia right now, which is more evidence. It says, After many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword. All right, so that's all I wanted on there, man. So that's prophecy that America is going to be destroyed, man. All right, and that Russia and NATO is going to go at it full speed ahead. Now, just to conclude, I'm going to get Zephaniah, the third chapter, and the eighth verse. It says, Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I will rise up to the prey, because it's going to, our deliverance is going to come from Yahweh Shire, which his name means salvation, all right? That's where our salvation is going to come from. It ain't nothing to do with being carnal and um, taking sword and trying to get um, justice for our own selves, man. It's going to come through Yahweh Shai when he returns with the angels to destroy uh, this rulership. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, righteous anger, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then I will turn to the people a pure language that they may call upon my, the name of the Lord, which the pure language is Hebrew, to serve him with one consent. So anyway, man, purpose of this lesson is um, basically to, 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 I'll read the title again, Destruction, Esau's heart is hardened and ripe and he's ripe for destruction because right now he's is that we're at the end of the end all right as the apostle to always says man you know we're at the end of the end and this so-called white man's kingdom is going down so with that i'm gonna say shalom